Welcome back. Many of you have already voted early, but if you haven't, you'll be seeing Amendment 1 on the ballot, or as it is more commonly known, Consumers for Smart Solar. Proponents of the amendment say it protects your right to put solar panels on your home or business, and it keeps those who don't use solar from having to subsidize those who do. Opponents say the amendment is an attempt by utility companies to block competition. Florida's Supreme Court narrowly approved wording of the amendment in a 4-3 to three vote. So how would Amendment 1 impact solar energy in the Sunshine State? Joining us for more on this discussion is Lourdes Ramirez of Sarasota's League of Women Voters, and joining us by phone is Skarin Watson, a board member for Consumers for Smart Solar. And Mr. Watson, let me start with you to give you an opportunity to respond to uh, what was in Adam's story. Uh, and basically boiling it down, that gentleman from the James Madison Institute, which is a Florida-based think, uh, think tank, which uh, the reports say is, is linked to the utility industry, which basically called this a, a piece of political jujitsu to get people who want solar to vote for an amendment that actually uh, favors the, the utility industry. Could you respond to that? Yeah, well, first, thank you for having me on the show. It's a pleasure to be here. You know, I listened to the, to the uh, lead in vain, and I guess what was, you know, we started off with it being Halloween, and I think what's scary to me, quite frankly, is the misinformation out there about what Amendment 1 does and what Amendment 1 doesn't do. And I know these are confusing and complicated issues, but let me just sum summarize real quick. You know, Amendment 1 puts the right for individuals and businesses to generate their own electricity at their business or their home, and then also to sell whatever excess, you know, solar power that they generate back to the grid. And that's, what, that's the right that it puts in the Constitution. The other thing that it does, quite frankly, and this is where a lot of the controversy lies, is it leaves government in the system to regulate uh, solar energy, whether it's regulation or consumer protection. It just simply leaves government there, as, as it is today, to protect consumers and also to regulate, just like they do the utilities and other power sources. So it really boils down to this. If, if you think government has a role in regulatory uh, actions and in consumer protections, then you'd like Amendment 1 because that's what it does. It leaves government in the process. If you don't think government has a role in regulating energy sources or protecting consumers, then you wouldn't be for Amendment 1. So that, that's, that's by and large what Amendment 1 does, and it's pretty clear in the language. All right, Lord. Real quickly, I, I don't want to avoid your question. But I think it was answered in your piece. Well, we'll get back. We'll, we'll, we'll delve into that more uh, coming okay. up in the, in the next segment. Right. But, Lourdes, I wanted to give you a chance to respond well, to that. I, I obviously disagree. I think the first sentence alone talks about allowing consumers to own and lease solar equipment for their own use. It doesn't say for their own use and they can sell it to others or back into the grid. So by limiting it and putting it in the Constitution that the consumers can... Uh, own and lease solar equipment to generate electricity for their own use, they're going to be limited to just using it for themselves. And I think our goal in the future is to allow consumers to also sell electricity which, from their solar power uh, equipment. And I don't think the utilities want that, obviously. The second part, the subsidies, is not, he didn't talk about that. That's not defined in this ballot. So it can be changed by the utilities to charge uh, solar power generators fees that they don't have to pay because they're not on the grid. But they would have to pay if this language passes. All right, we are just starting in on this subject when we will have much more on Amendment 1 when we come back. But first, we'll take a look at your primetime weather. Welcome back. We are discussing Amendment 1 and what it would mean for Floridians. Our guests tonight are Lourdes Ramirez of Sarasota's League of Women Voters. And joining us by phone is Screvin Watson, the board member for Consumers for Smart Solar. And uh, Screvin, let me start with you again and take another shot at you responding to uh, that quote from somebody from a, a think tank who is associated with the industry. And basically, the point that he was trying to say is that there's a lot of language in the, a lot of the commercials that we're seeing for Amendment 1 in favor of it that makes it seem to consumers that, oh, this is great, this would allow us uh, to uh, get solar panels on our homes and free ourselves from the utility industry when, in fact, uh, it, it, the amendment itself doesn't because you're not allowed to, um, you know, contract with uh, third parties because, after all, that would hurt the business of utilities. So if you could respond to that. 
Yeah, and I don't want to seem disrespectful, but I'm going to, to I'm going to disagree with, with your characterization of that. Amendment 1, and Lourdes talked about that, and she was right in, in one of the things she said. Amendment 1 does allow you to generate your own electricity. It doesn't allow you to sell it to your neighbor or somebody like that, but it doesn't prohibit that. See, that's one of the myths I talked about in the opening. You know, the, the legislature next year or the PSC or the out-of-state solar industry has their own constitutional amendment they're trying to pass to allow third-party sales. Amendment 1 does not prohibit it. There's nothing in Amendment 1 that prohibits it. It doesn't speak to it. It only speaks to individual ownership and business ownership and your individual use. So Lourdes was correct there, but to then take the next step and say that Amendment 1 prohibits that is just wrong because that's not in Amendment 1. Oh. It doesn't preclude any business model. Lourdes, right or wrong? I, I think that's wrong because if it says here you can only uh, generate electricity for your own use, it's essentially prohibiting you selling the electricity, which is what we want to change in the in the future. So anyone can interpret that. If you try to sell it, then what you're doing is violating the Constitution. Screven? That, that's not what the court said. And the court and the majority of the court and the financial impact study that you can get online or that is actually part of the ballot said specifically Amendment 1 doesn't create any new power doesn't create any new regula regulations, doesn't create any new fees. And this is a group of people that are, that are tasked with looking at these amendments. And it said it did not, specifically in the court case and in the financial impact study, said that was not the case. It did not prohibit any other business model. Okay, here is... It just simply says you have the right to, to do right. it let me, let me jump in here because Florida voters just this August voted on... Amendment 4, which many believe thought, okay, opens the doors to put up solar panels on our, our homes. Um, and I would imagine a, a lot of people who are watching this right now are just totally confused. And Lourdes, um, it, it was considered to be a big victory for consumers who want to put up panels to uh, Amendment 4 over the summer. So what is going on here? I, and that, Amendment 4 was terrific because it's allowing businesses to get tax breaks to install solar. And so you could only imagine that if you had a big shopping mall, like the Sarasota Square Mall or UTC, installing all these solar panels and generating electricity that not only covers their business, but can, maybe they can sell it to their tenants or to the properties next door, it will be great. Now, they got that part, they get the tax break, they can install solar. But what they can't do is then sell that excess electricity on, which will not give them the incentive to now, install solar. Is it your position? Well, they can't sell it back. They just can't sell it to Walmart, can't sell it to some neighbor. She's correct. But again, that the legislature next year, the PSC, they can allow it. It's not allowed now. But it could be allowed. And Amendment 1 does not speak to that. And by the way, Amendment 4 was a great thing. It wasn't anything to do with whether you could do solar or not. It just provided a tax break. But it was a very good thing. All right. Passed overwhelmingly. So, Lourdes, does Amendment 1 in any way hurt what was achieved in Amendment 4? I think so, because, I, it, you know, if businesses can ha have the incentive not only to get the tax break, but also to get that additional um, ability to generate profit for themselves, and, and they were probably more willing to put in solar panels, where I think the tax breaks may or may not give them in incentives. I like the double incentive. Yeah, Scriven, I was interested in something that you said earlier because uh, basically your argument was Amendment 1 would uh, require government to still be involved in this process. A lot of people want government out of this process altogether and talk about let the free market uh, basically um, you know, uh, do, do, do its thing, even if that is the de to the detriment of a company or a utility or what? I think... Uh, I think and listen, this is where lawyers, you and I, these are all policy discussions, and everybody has reasonable beliefs here. But I think it's dangerous as heck to take – I think government has a role in certain issues in our life. And one of them is to protect consumers and to create fairness in the system. Taking government out of any energy source I think is dangerous. And I would ask your viewers and your listeners to do this. In the West, there have been, that is ahead of Florida in solar. They, they've been doing solar out West for many different reasons. Uh, more than we have. And, there, and solar has gotten a black eye out there. And if your viewers would Google very quickly uh, after the broadcast, Arizona solar fraud or Arizona solar bankruptcy, they will see page after page after page of consumer ripoffs and all sorts of issues. And that gave 
that gave Arizona and solar a black eye. All Amendment 1 does is says, as we move forward with this technology, that government retains, not enlarges, retains its role to oversee consumer protection and consumer fairness. Or just how would you respond to that? Yeah, you know, he talked about Arizona, but he's not mentioning Nevada. When Nevada passed a similar uh, amendment to their constitution as we're talking about here, there was actually groundswell opposition um, after it passed because they were also duped, as this, I think, will happen here. And um, instead, what people are talking about is deregulating electrical power out there because of the fact they're so upset that they can't have solar. I guess here is... Let me ask you both this question because, uh, and, and Screven, you, you referred to this. We rank, uh, incredibly, we are the sunshine state, but we rank nowhere near the top of any state uh, in terms of using solar energy. And the question to both of you right now is if Amendment 1 uh, passes or is defeated, what impact will that have on the future of, of usage of solar energy and the industry here in Florida. And Screvin, let me start with you. Okay. Well, I think discussions like Mortis and that we're having today are good things. It gets people focused on solar. I think all this discussion is good. But let me, let me be real clear on the Florida does lag. But Florida, the western states are mandated for certain alternative uh, energy sources. They've mandated. Florida is voluntary. And among voluntary states in the United States of America, they rank first or second. Now, we've got a lot of growth to do, and solar is growing in Florida because of Amendment 4 and tax breaks and net metering and other things, and it will continue to grow. But Amendment 1 simply says you have a right that nobody can take away to do your own electricity. They'll decide later on about some of the business models Mortis has talked about, but it also says government is able to be in the process to protect consumers. And for the life of me, I just can't understand why that's so controversial if we want the protections that were lacking out west in some instances when it came to protecting consumers. Okay, big picture here in Florida. The, 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 the knock on Amendment 1 is it protects the utility companies, the energy mm -hmm. producers. Screvin, respond to that, and I want to give Lourdes a chance to respond to that after that. Yeah, and, uh, and I mean, in your opening, again, it says it allows utilities to do this or utilities to do that. And I, you know, again, beg to disagree because what Amendment 1 does is leave the Florida legislature in the process, the Public Service Commission, which, by the way, regulates all energy. Traditional power sources are probably the most regulated industry in the state of Florida, if not the nation. It also controls their profits. They're only allowed to make a profit that the PSC tells them they can make. And so, you know, the, the, to say that Amendment 1 hands a trophy of sorts, if you will, or a bouquet of roses to the utilities, you can't read Amendment 1 and see that other than to say that government retains its role to be involved as it is today. Okay. So, again, it boils down to this. If you don't want government involved in energy issues, then you're not probably going to be for Amendment 1. Right. But if you do, okay. that's why we have, by the way. We have less than a minute left, so I, we, we have a less yeah, than... That's why we have firefighters. We, uh, well, firefighters. Thank you, Scrabbing. We have less than a minute left, so I wanted to give I believe the last that word. if Amendment pa um, 1 passes, then eliminate free market of electricity. And the next thing would have to be is to try to break down the utilities by deregulating the electrical market. But that's the reason why the utilities are spending $20 million on this, because they want this to pass, because it's going to cut down on competition. They don't want competition. Real quick, there have been a lot more commercials for passage of Amendment 1 yeah. than those opposed to it. Because they have $20 million to spend to try to dupe the consumers or the voters, where Sierra Club, the League of Women Voters, and, and uh, those who are supporting or opposing um, Amendment 1 don't have that kind of money. All right, we're going to take another short break, but when we return, we'll have final thoughts from both of our guests. Welcome back. There is less than two weeks until Election Day. The question tonight, will Floridians pass Amendment 1? Our guests join us now for final thoughts, and it deals with solar energy. And Screvin Watson, I want to give you a chance for your final thoughts. Yes, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And I just want to say this. Our opponents, and they've done a pretty good job, have tried to make it a litmus test on whether you're pro-solar or anti-solar based on their business model of out-of-state solar companies leasing equipment to Floridians. We disagree. We think you can be pro-solar by, by Amendment 1 
grants you the right to have that individual ownership and use, but it leaves government involved to protect consumers and make sure the system is fair so that the many Floridians that don't choose solar or can't afford it aren't paying for the upkeep of the grid for those who do. And that's just simply what Amendment 1 does. All right, Lourdes, why is that a bad thing? It, the, the thing is, it, the utility companies don't want competition. It just comes down to that. And they're spending $20 million to get, get the message out for their own purpose. But every newspaper in the state of Florida has said to oppose Amendment 1, and we agree. Because it really is going to add fees to those who have solar who are not paying it now because they're getting the discount because they have solar power. Right. So. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you. But before we go, we want to share with you some thoughts about what you're saying about Hillary Clinton's visit to Tampa yesterday. The Democratic nominee for president urged supporters to take advantage of early voting during her visit, and she laid out a vision for the nation vastly different than Donald Trump, and we asked you what you thought. Christina Noah writes, her venue in the little park in downtown Tampa was lim with limited parking, while Donald Trump filed, filled up a huge concert venue that there were still many out others outside of it. And James Wagan writes, rally numbers don't matter. The only numbers that matter are the electoral college, just 12 more days, and this ridiculous threat of Trump presidency will be finally over. Well, if you'd like to join the conversation about tonight's topic, just visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash news at seven. And Want to watch past roundtable discussions? They are available on Apple TV, Amazon, Amazon Fire, and Roku by downloading our My Sun Coast app. I want to thank our guests for being here tonight. Lourdes Ramirez is with the Sarasota League of Women Voters, and Screvin Watson is a board member with Consumers for Smart Solar.